you know, you kind of talked a bit about addressing the legacy of, of intergenerational trauma, of colonialism, um, and trying to bring people back, uh, you know, in, in that territory, back to the land and healing through that. I, I do want to ask, like, if you could elaborate on that a bit more, like what is exactly happening at this healing center? What is the focus, you know, et cetera? That'd be really great. Well, I, I think the crux of it is that um, for what Soatan people and a lot of indigenous people, and I, I hate to pan-indigenize, but I, I know that um, a great deal of uh, indigenous people do center their identity and their culture um, on the land, right? And our, our relationship with the land. And so I think one of our, our challenges is that, you know, um, we've been deliberately um, removed from and disconnected from our land and culture time and time again since colonization. Um, you know, and that disconnection from our land um, leads to all sorts of economic and social uh, challenges and struggles for our communities. Um, I guess I, I I don't know how to put it into simple terms, but, you know, I, I think about all of the customs and the, the ceremony and the practices that we've, we have in our community that make us with Silicon and, and how much of them are, are linked back to our land and our territory. Um, I guess I'll share an example from my personal life. Um, you know, my, my daughter, uh, she's quite young. Um, and we, you know, since Frida has moved back to our territory, it's really prompted us to do a bit of, uh, revitalization of our own cultural practices within our Unistaten house. And so it's, it's meant that we are coming back to, to, um, engage in our annual action camps that, you know, focus on really, um, reconnecting and, and protecting, um, our traditional territories um, and, and meeting with other indigenous people around that. Um, but also, you know, other aspects of, of wellness and, and um, strengthening that connection. So, uh, you know, we, we've had this cultural practice, this ceremony um, for our, our people that um, we've just brought back into practice within my, my house group through my daughter. And I think she's the first one that, I can think of within um, two generations um, that we've actually carried this, this uh, really um, ancient practice out with. Um, And so that's a ceremony that, you know, really after her birth um, connected her to, to the land. Um, And I won't share the the finer details of it, but um, I think it really exemplifies the fact that, you know, we see our members as as um, one and the same as our land, right? So there was there was a practice to really um, connect her and and root her in our territories. Um, and I I've seen how that's um, I guess how that's been so impactful in in terms of her own identity formation and um how it's it's potentially going to build up her resiliency in a way that you know i didn't have the opportunity to to have so you know when we go to our yinta she's at a really young age and and you know there are She's both Lakota and Wet'suwet'en, so um, you know I'm, I'm kind of mindful of some of the teachings of, of both of those cultures. But um, I guess from the Lakota teachings, she she's going to be a spirit uh, up until she's six, so she's going to be very connected um, to the spiritual realm up until she's six. And it's our responsibility as parents, as family, that larger family system, to really take care of her and nurture her, um, so that she decides to stay on this earth world and doesn't decide to return to the spirit world. So, I mean, I I love the alignment with some of the teachings in in psychology about that critical developmental period up till six, right? And and we know that from psychology, how important that is. And it's, it's just fascinating to me that some of that 
um, ancient indigenous knowledge um, and knowing was already there prior to the, the scientific backing, right, of our, our Western um, theologies. But I think, you know, um, it's it's just so clear that she is connected in that way. And I don't know if that's part of what this ceremony um like the intrinsic knowing of that ceremony that like literally helps connect a part of her to the land. But I, I saw it from our early visits to our territory that she, um, you know, her babbling and her um, attempts to engage us as, as um, you know, adults in her life, part of that developmental stage, you know, that we expect that she's going to engage um you know, people in the room and, and kind of try try to build that connection, uh, that bond, that attachment. I saw those kinds of behaviors as we were walking through the territory directed, um, you know, like she'd increase that babbling and that she almost looked like she was speaking to ancestors on the land. And it was only at the sites within our territory where there historically were pit houses or gathering places um, that our community used. And so, you know, I think about how um, how important that connection was historically to the land um, for our people and, and how that must have shaped us and made us strong, you know, to know that we aren't ever alone in this world, that we have land to ground us, that we have ancestors behind us, um, and how much um, that prepares an individual to face some of the overwhelming hardships in this experience, and especially for Indigenous people, all of the ways that, you know, um, we we experience inequities in those social determinants of health, like with poverty. And, uh, you know, um, I guess it's kind of a, a big issue, and I, I don't know if I'm giving it justice, but, you know, just this I, we're keenly aware that connection to our land and our territory and, and being able to grow up um, to experience that, right, to experience our culture in, in that really rich, direct way where you're trapping on the land, where you're fishing off the land, where you're drinking pristine water from a river um, right on your territory. It, it, uh, it helps keep us grounded and, and connected um, And, you know, when your individuals and your whole population or your nation is um, still reeling from historic and current experiences with colonization, with disempowerment, um, how important it is to be grounded in something much bigger than ourselves, um, something like the land. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, Frida probably summarizes it um, really nicely in, in some of her quotes and, and just acknowledging that um, when we um, heal the land, we heal our people, right? Like there's there's not really a, a dichotomy seen there, right? Um, right. We are one and the same. 